Hey, what's going on? Welcome back, CISSP wannabes. These are the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day, where each and every day you get two questions for you to ponder and contemplate. I'm Colin Weaver. Let's get right to it. First question today coming at you in the world of firewalls. Which of the following, and I want you to pick five, are typically not allowed to pass outbound through a firewall heading out toward the internet? Pick five of them. Click pause. When you're ready, click play, and we'll break it down. Okay, first two items on the list, HTTP and FTP. Absolutely, we let these go out to the internet. Uh, the internet wouldn't be much fun without HTTP and FTP not too far behind. Next item on the list is SNMP. Uh, no, we don't typically allow SNMP traffic to go out to the internet. So that's one of the five that we're looking for here. Then uh, DNS, uh, DNS we absolutely allow out. So again, the internet's gonna be even less fun without DNS. So do you definitely want to make sure that uh, selective DNS traffic is allowed to leave your network as well. Next guy on our list is uh, EIGRP, the Enhanced Interior Gateway Routing Protocol, uh, negative. Uh, he's an interior routing protocol, so he stays inside your network. He doesn't go out to the internet. And then uh, next after that is RADIUS, the Remote Authentication Dial-In User Service. Again, nope, don't typically allow those, uh, uh, those particular ports to go out to the internet either. So uh, that's EIGRP and RADIUS are also two that are correct answers that you're looking for here. Next guy down, OSPF, Open Shortest Path First, another routing protocol, just like EIGRP, he's an interior routing protocol. So he's not a protocol that you're typically gonna let go out to the internet. So that's another one, that's a correct answer. Okay, next one on the list is SSH. Uh, yes, we do typically allow SSH to go out. Now, that's got a big old asterisk and a caveat next to it of going in and saying, yeah, we let it out, but uh, it's, it's a prudent thing to let it out only for devices that are really gonna benefit from it. Going in and having a statement that just lets all outbound SSH traffic go is a recipe for people using SSH against you, um, if they compromise one of your internal machines, to tunnel traffic through SSH in order to hide the evidence of what they're doing. So. I'm a big fan of not allowing SSH out from devices unless they have a specific need to do SSH. But it is a protocol that we do typically see allowed out in people's networks. And so I would not consider it one of the answers here. Next one on the list is SMTP. Yeah, we let SMTP out. Again, this is another one of those uh, protocols that you should be selective about. Just going in and saying, oh yeah, all outbound SMTP is okay. No. You're gonna allow outbound SMTP only from authorized SMTP servers. So just some node on your network originating an outbound connection to a mail server, um, a lot of times that's telltale of a problem. So, um, you know, or it may, it may or may not be, it you know, depends. But in general, you're gonna want only traffic coming from your, uh, from your internal network to be coming from authorized SMTP servers. So yes, we do let it out, uh, but it's something that you let out in a controlled way. So in the context of this question, no, I don't consider it to be one of the correct answers. And then the final player is LDAP, the Lightweight Directory Access Protocol. Um, LDAP is not a protocol that you typically allow to go out to the internet. Um, he's kind of a stay in the house kind of guy. So um, that's, those are the choices that you're looking for. So the full list of correct answers here, SNMP, EIGRP, RADIUS, OSPF, and LDAP. Those are the ones that we typically do not, at least from this list, allow to go out to the internet. Okay, here comes question number two. Which of the following are characteristics of elliptic curve cryptography? I want you to pick four. Four. Okay. Click pause. Give them a read. When you're ready, click play. We'll break it all down. All right. First answer on the list says that it is stronger than RSA using significantly smaller keys. Uh, absolutely. In fact, if ECC had a salesman, this would probably be the first thing out of his mouth is talking about how much stronger it is using smaller and smaller and smaller keys. Okay, so that's definitely a big selling point for ECC. Next item on the list says it has a large memory footprint. Uh, no, it doesn't. Um, no, so that's not one of its characteristics. Third item on the list, it can help conserve battery power in mobile devices. This is true. Um, ECC, because it uses smaller keys, requires less computational effort. Less computational effort means fewer CPU cycles, and fewer CPU cycles means potential for longer battery life. So it definitely has a capacity to contribute to battery life in there. It's not gonna be the savior of your device from a battery life perspective, but when you're dealing with battery life, every little bit, right? Next option, it has lower CPU overhead compared to RSA, absolutely true. This is due in large part to the fact that it uses significantly smaller keys, and so those smaller keys require less CPU effort than, a, than the, the much larger RSA keys that we would typically encounter. Next item on the list, it is not supported 
by most web browsers. Uh, that could not be farther from the truth. In fact, my research indicates that all the web browsers that I would anticipate people using on a regular basis absolutely support ECC these days. Uh, and in fact, it's not too uncommon for it to be preferred on an increasing basis for the web browsers and the web servers to go in and use elliptic curve cryptography in some way. So uh, Safari, uh, Chrome, Firefox, uh, those are the ones that all really matter to me. Those absolutely all support it. I suppose the Microsoft stuff supports it too, but I'm just kidding, playing with you, Microsoft. Next guy on the list says that ECC was introduced as an alternative to AES. Uh, could not be farther from the truth. Uh, ECC and AES, even though they both are cryptography-related things, uh, don't have anything to do with each other, so no, that's not the correct answer. And then the last item, which is also one of the correct answers, is, is that it can be used in Diffie-Hellman key exchanges. In fact, it's increasingly and very commonly used um, as part of the Diffie-Hellman key, Diffie key exchange to go in and use ECC in that process. So you bet, um, ECC is definitely gaining a lot of popularity after many years of being around and not really making a lot of headway. It's been in the past several years that we've seen it make a tremendous amount of headway in its popularity and use on the internet. All right, there you have it. First question was on firewalls and which kind of protocols are you typically gonna allow out to the internet going through your firewall. Second question was on some of the general characteristics of elliptic curve cryptography. I hope you dug those questions. If you did, make sure you push on that like button down there. Subscribe if you wanna get these every single day. I'll be back tomorrow and that's when I'll see you next. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.